Intelligence heritability is 50 to 60% in developed countries. There you have it. I already answered the question in the title of this video. You can go now. Just kidding. But that's not really why you're here. You're here to know what that number means, how that relates to other beliefs that you have, what that says about your political positions and the eternal debate between nature and nurture. And that's what I'll tell you. I decided to make this video because people's beliefs are often interconnected and this topic relates a lot to people's political leanings. For example, left-leaning people, me included, tend to favor cultural nurture explanations rather than genetic ones. So I'm doing this video because I realized that what I thought I knew about intelligence's inheritance was much more about belief than actual knowledge. So I decided to dive deep into research to solve that problem and I decided to bring you along for the ride while I descended into madness trying to figure this out. And right from the start I learned that heritability scores were higher than what I realized, like 50-60% as I told you. This kind of blew my mind a little bit to be honest, I, I thought it was gonna be less. But I also realized that people usually don't really know what heritability means, you probably mistake it with genetical determination. For example, the number of fingers in your hand is genetically determined. Our genes dictate that humans have five fingers. But heritability is about differences caused by genes, and when it comes to variations in numbers of fingers, they are often caused by accidents and knives. This means that number of fingers has low heritability, because the differences that arise in people are caused by the environment and not by genes. So heritability is about how differences in genes explain variations in a trait. For intelligence, this would mean that having better genes would predict that you have higher IQ than someone with worse genes. Simple stuff, right? At this point I had an understanding of average heritability scores, but I found something really, really interesting. That intelligence heritability scores are not always the same. While it is true that heritability is about 60, even 70% for rich people, for economically disadvantaged ones it's more like 20%. That's a big discrepancy. But that's not all. In fact, these differences in heritability due to social economic status occur in the United States, but not in Europe. In Europe, here, heritability is about the same for everyone, regardless of how much money they have in their bank account. Presumably because here we have a fairer access to opportunities, housing and education. Our environments are more similar. Even more, in Sudan, the only study I could find that investigated heritability in developing countries, genetic influences account for only 11% of differences in intelligence. Intelligence heritability is only 11% in Sudan. But how can heritability scores vary so much? Well, indulge me in this little thought experiment. Imagine a dystopian reality where everyone was raised in white rooms and everything was the same for everyone. Everyone would be taught the same things, eat the same food, read the same books. Basically, all humans would share the same exact environment. This would mean that any differences that they, that we showed, would be caused by genes. Everything else being equal, the only variability that can possibly exist is explained by differences in our genetic material. In such a situation, heritability for every single trait would be 100%. This is the reason why heritability scores for intelligence are so variable, because the more environmental differences there are, more the influence of genes gets diluted. Ok, at this point I felt I already had some decent info, but it still seemed too abstract. I asked myself what these percentages translate to in terms of average IQ differences between people, so I thought to myself, if heritability is the amount of difference explained by genes, then what is the average difference in IQ in a given population? So if you cross someone on the street, what is the average difference between you and that person in terms of IQ? And this seemed impossible to answer, at least for me, because I'm not a math whiz or anything like that, which led me to literally call friends and look in obscure parts of the internet. 
By doing this, I found out that it is actually possible because, by definition, IQ scores are normally distributed, with an average score of 100 and a standard deviation of 15 points. Not relevant for this video. So I finally found it out. Okay, you can write down in the comments how much you think it is before I say it, and remember that the average IQ is 100, and that 68% of people have IQs between 85 and 115. So, write your answer, whatever. The answer to this question is that the average difference in IQ is 17. 16.9256 to be exact, which means that even if genetic heritability is 60%, genes only explain on average 10 IQ points of difference among people. This doesn't seem like a lot. But in order to understand whether nature or nurture are more important for intelligence, I needed to understand how this compared to the influence of context. Okay, quick summary of what I found. There's a very well-known effect in intelligence studies called the Flynn effect. It describes how IQ scores rise as countries become more developed, as its citizens become more educated, have more access to food, and so on. This effect accounts for an average of 3 IQ points rising per decade, which means that you have 10 more IQ points than your parents, you now have evidence to prove that you are actually smarter than them, you're welcome. I'm obviously kidding, these are average numbers, you're probably dumb as a rock. Nutrition also has a sizable effect. People who were previously malnourished had, on average, 15 point lower IQs. Education also has a significant role, calculated to be about 3 IQ points per schooling Year. And the list goes on. Trauma and experienced violence. Children who experienced intense levels of these were found to have 5 to 7 point lower IQs than those who hadn't. And one particularly strong set of evidence comes from adoption studies, especially kids who are adopted into high social economic status families. Studies show increases ranging from 15 to 19 IQ points when kids or babies are adopted into rich families. That's kind of a lot. The environment is much more important than nature. I could come here and say that and add all of these environmental influences up to support my political point of view. But that's not a valid approach for two reasons. First, these environmental influences co-vary. For example, if you're in a rich family, you're less prone to trauma, malnourishment, etc. Additionally, we are comparing average genetic influences to more extreme environmental influences, which makes environmental influences look bigger. But despite these caveats, that doesn't take away environment's importance, because what seems extreme to economically stable families may be normal daily life for poorer ones. Violence, housing, food and water insecurity and lack of access to education are more common than what we usually realize, than we usually think in our little bubbles of people who have time to watch and make YouTube videos. So in this debate between nature and nurture, who wins? Let me just get this out of the way, they are both really important and they interact in complex ways to give rise to what we know as intelligence, so there's not really a winner. But still, who wins? Well, how can we even answer this? I would say that if we ask the question which one of them should we focus on to increase the average IQ of the human race, seems like a good question, right? And the data says that for now, the answer would be the environment, because Although in the richest echelons of our world, heritabilities are already more than 50%, that doesn't reflect the global reality of our race. Even in the United States, low social economic status people have heritabilities of only 20%, which means that 80% of their differences in IQ are given by the environment and not by genes. If our goal is indeed to improve the IQ of the human race, we need to provide equal opportunities, stability, security, to those who don't have them. I already came across people who staunchly defend that we should increase the IQ of the human population through genetic interventions. And the reality of this argument is that often what these people consider to be the human race is actually what happens in their backyards. Because if they actually cared about the human race as a whole, and not only people who look and speak like them, 
it wouldn't be really difficult to see where more impactful interventions should be made. In fact, our goal, almost paradoxically and despite lefties not liking high heritability scores, our goal should be that intelligence heritability grew over time, until maybe one day it would matter more than the environmental differences. Because that would mean that inequalities were diminishing, that our environments would be much more similar than they are now. I'm sure this has the potential to arouse some pretty interesting comments, which I'm eager to see and to refute. Kidding. You'll all agree with me. I'm also sure that you would love this video on how we measure things that we can touch or see in psychology, like love and intelligence. That's a goodie.